Hey guys, welcome to another episode on TFB TV. Today I am in Panchia province, which is a province just north of Kabul. And I am sitting on a, I think this is a T, what is this? T60, probably a T72, or probably an earlier model. I don't know my Russian tanks as, mo as well as I should. But this is a really cool province. This is where Ahmad Shah Massoud actually fought the Soviets for a number of years. And this is where the Soviets got wrecked several times in a row. In fact, multiple times they would come here every year to try to get with Massoud and to try to take him out. And every single year, Massoud, similar to an American Stonewall Jackson, if you might call it that, wrecked them down this one little valley right here and stayed here for the entire time. Anyways, guys, today we're going to be looking at New Guard America and we're going to be looking at some of these Springfield rifles that they're actually twirling around and throwing around and stuff, which is really cool. A little bit away from the live fire side of things, but I think it's really fascinating to see this aspect of firearms and using them for drill and ceremony purposes. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode and we also want to give a big shout out to Ventura Munitions that helps us bring this sort of content to you every week. Most of our videos are live fire and historical small arms and stuff like that. What I really wanted to explore today is exhibition drill and everything that comes into it. Because exhibition from a lot of different ways, you got a lot of history wrapped into it, um, a lot of fascinating sportsmanship, and it's a fascinating sport in its own right. So I'd really like to just talk about you know, some of the history, some of the individual bits and pieces in the exhibition drill that we have today so some of our viewers can sort of get a glance into this side note which is entirely about small arms and is entirely about using small arms and firearms even though they're deactivated or demilled but it's at an extremely high level of sportsmanship so please I'd like you both to introduce yourselves and take us away into the sport of exhibition drill. Right well uh, thank you very much Miles. Uh, my name is Andres Ryan uh, I'm a distinguished master soloist uh, second level honors for New Guard America uh, and this is Adam Jupe uh, he's a se senior rifleman for New Guard America uh, we are two of the senior members on the team right now. Let's get into the history. Where did the, where did the exhibition drill all begin in the United States? And let's kind of work our way from the 1800s up until today. Thomas Edison filmed this Arabian gun twirler. And that's the name of the video, Arabian gun twirler. Uh, you can look it up. It's an old circus guy um, in 1800s who actually has a pretty refined style of drill, uh, which is remarkably impressive, which means he's been doing it for several years. So we don't even know where it officially starts, why people started spinning rifles other than it felt good, it looked good. Um, so it's a really cool historical background that the first piece of evidence we have of exhibition drill originated from Thomas Edison in the 1800s. Uh, now, now we take uh, that and we fast forward about 50 or 60 years. Um, in the mid 40s, uh, to uh, late 50s, uh, we start to see the service drill teams uh, appear. Uh, now, uh, most of the services already had their honor guard in place, um, you know, take care of uh, funeral details, things like that. Um, and then they started to uh, have these uh, trick platoons. Now, initially, this was just a platoon, eventually it became um, a company, and then that it became part of, uh, you know, indoctrination uh, for the uh, regiment. Uh, so that they would actually have these teams uh, to basically serve as, you know, goodwill ambassadors uh, for the armed services. Just like you would have a, um, a very qualified unit uh, to showcase things, uh, that's what the drill teams were used for. Uh, a lot of the success of exhibition drill today um, was picked up by JRTC, who saw those qualities. They wanted their kids to have honor and discipline and learn these these tricks because they instill a certain thing inside, a certain level of teamwork, a certain level of perfection, a certain level of something to strive for. Um, and these JROTC units started teaching these kids how to spin and they took the sport and, and ran with it. Um, and we see that today, the ones who are most motivated find a way to keep doing it. And that, that's how our generation came about. What makes exhibition drill so uniquely American? Um, well, it, it's really interesting that you say that because uh, a lot of people in other countries don't necessarily have access to weapons, uh, even those that, that appear to be weapons. Um, in Singapore, the cadet corps actually use uh, layers of fiberglass taped together uh, to resemble their exhibition weapon. Um, so, so you see that, um, but uh, alternatively in the United States, uh, all our JROTC units originally had demilitarized weapons. Um, and then they had this availability uh, to be able to work and, and train like that. Now, uh, you look at the normal 
I guess, laws in other countries that they don't necessarily look the same way. Now, you look at American culture as having this strong uh, Second Amendment right, uh, and then that kind of same um, free spirit towards weapons and everything also lends to what we see Exhibition Drill doing. So that's where you see this evolution where some people go to ROTC and they start it there. Some people go to the civilian world and they start it there. Some people enlist in the military and they go to an honor guard if they meet some of the requirements and they do it there. Uh, some people just go in their backyards and spin recreationally. Some people go in their backyards and spin competitively and then take that to the World Drill Championships. Um, at the end of the day, drill is one of those unique sports that you can do on your own or you can do in a team. You can find people that meet your interest level, meet your skill level, and you can join forces with them to make something better. And if you don't even have that, you can at least do it yourself. Um, so there's always an avenue to do it. So those people who make that individual decision to push themselves and go forward define what the rest of drill looks like. New Guard, when, when we go abroad and overseas, um, we're representing the United States. Uh, now we do that uh, as ambassadors for us, but not only that, uh, our way of life. Um, uh, Constantine Wilson always said that he was uh, living the dream, uh, and it was our job to be uh, keeping the dream, and that's being able to showcase the fact that we are in fact a civilian rifle exhibition drill team that is representing the United States abroad. Uh, now to some that, that concept in itself seems very foreign. Um, so it developed from just that concept of being able to show other people that we're capable of doing that. Um, and then you, this love for the sport, this love for the team, uh, being able to push that to the next level, there's always gonna be someone that wants to be the MVP. Uh, you know, and Constantine Wilson was this visionary that saw this as uh, not only is this, you know, something that's good for cadets, not only is this something to showcase our military really well, but this is also something we need to show the rest of the world. Um, but this all developed from just competitive drill in general, um, which developed from the JROTCs. Um, the, the ceremonial drill teams, um, they're, they're strictly kind of a show. Um, at one point they kind of held a competition between them, but they decided that this was really for ceremonial purposes mm -hmm. uh, and they never continued to go that route. If you look at some of the other branches, uh, historically the Marine Corps JRTCs used to use a lot of M14s for their drill. The Air Force used to use M1s, Army used 1903s, um, but eventually the M14s and M1s all got phased out uh, for a variety of reasons um, in favor of the 1903 was more readily available. Uh, there were a lot more older models that were easy to demilitarize. Um, and when they were recalling those M1s and M14s, uh, the government contracted out another company to make a drill weapon explicitly for drill. And the model that they chose to be the most commercially viable weapon on the market was 1903. As far as drill, that was definitely a really good choice because the 1903 is a slimmer body. And when you're trying to spin it around your body, when you're trying to control it, uh, you really need as much grip ability as you can get. So having a slimmer body makes a huge difference in terms of the tricks you can do um, and, and fighting that centripetal force around your body. The plastic we use is a uh, high impact uh, plastic uh, that was actually developed by Constantine Wilson. Um, they took uh, standard molds that was used for a regular uh, fiberglass stock um, that they would use and we found over time that these stocks can really uh, handle the beatings that we were giving them. I mean, regular regulation units could, could definitely use them for practice, but we definitely needed something as the sport evolved that was going to definitely take a beating. Uh, so um, a manufacturer, of, or not a manufacturer, a distributor of uh, uniform parts and Constantine partnered. Uh, they, they bought a mold and they basically started uh, experimenting with different plastics to try to make our high impact plastic uh, rifle stock that would put up with all the abuse. Um, he finally uh, came together with a formula that not only uh, withstanded the impact, uh, but something that we could use different colors of plastics uh, to make something that was nice and vivid and uh, more appealing. Um, you see this kind of kickback from society of you know weapons out in the open area and just people being more iffy about firearms in general. Um, so we would have pink stocks, we would have yellow stocks, we would have green stocks. And that really just helped us further the sport because the more people could practice out in the open, the more publicity, the more people could actually see it and normalize the activity, 
uh, the more it really worked to our advantage. Um, also, you know, like Adam said, people are in this for the team mentality or just for themselves or just they want to perform. Uh, so it's something that also lets us be individuals. As an individual, it provides many things that you kind of would have to go to a lot of different places to get. There's always a challenge, there's always a hurdle to overcome. Um, it's, it's one of the hardest spinning sports out there. I can't think of another sport where you're spinning things that weigh 10 pounds and you stick a knife on the end. Um, and when you add that danger factor, there's a lot of personal challenges that have to be overcome if you're going to succeed in the sport. And every time you succeed in one of those personal challenges, whether it's to drill harder, drill faster, throw a bigger trick, throw a higher aerial, it's immensely gratifying uh, because you put in hours, you put in this dedication, you put in this level of perfection. And that's the kind of stuff that shows through the rest of your life. Even if you're just going out there to spin and getting a good workout, there's always something to get out of drill practice. Hey guys, if you want to find out anything more about New Guard America, please check out the website. They've got a lot of cool stuff to offer from the indestructible stocks we were talking about earlier. And they also have an, a YouTube channel of their own that we'd really like to give a shout out to as well. Adam, uh, what's the YouTube channel? Yeah, it's Independent Drill. You find it on YouTube, just Independent Drill. It's a training resource for drill. So you go up to it, it has all the tricks laid out. Uh, Slow-mo, so you can see all the things. I'll explain the tricks as I go. Um, there's even some entertainment videos on there. Uh, it's everything drill related, so if you drilled in the past or you want to drill in the future, you never drilled before, uh, head up to Independent Drill. You can learn everything about it. If you'd like to have uh, more information on New Guard America, uh, check out our website at newguardusa.com. Uh, we have information about our team, uh, past performances, uh, some of the supplies we use to do these amazing feats with the weapons, uh, as well as uh, a lot of other links so you guys uh, can get a little bit more uh, insight on what we call Rifle Exhibition Drill. Thank you.